All right. Oh, one second. All right, we are live. Welcome everyone. Welcome everyone to our new interview panels discussion. Welcome to Poetry Love Media. I am your servant and host, Sheldon Altador. Um, there is currently a severe thunderstorm warning and watch in this region. So we're gonna go by faith and continue. But one of our panelists is host in case anything goes down. I could join through audio just in case, all right? So welcome to Portrait Love Media, where we share Christ-centered content to your screen. Today's panel discussion we will be addressing today is on emergency preparedness, a topic that is pertinent for our time in these last days. Our panelists for today are Dr. Heather McBride, Dr. Fitzgerald Kerr, and Pauline Lewitson. Dr. Heather McBride is a native of the sunny island of Barbados, who immigrated to the US at age six. She has been a registered nurse for over 35 years and held the title of assistant director of nursing at a large metropolitan hospital in New York. She has done medical missionary work in the US, North America, Central America, and the Caribbean. She is a naturopathic doctor and has had several personal testimonies of God's miraculous healing. As a result, the Lord has led her, led her to change the direction of her nursing career to go into full-time gospel medical missionary work with her husband, Elder Edwin McBride. They are both founders of ANEWU Ministries and the Character Building for Eternity International Prayer Line. CBFEIPL is the acronym a branch of ANEWU Ministries, which arose as a result of COVID. She has taught several, several medical missionaries over the years, and they believe in the power of prayer. Our next panelist, Pauline Lewison, is a native of Jamaica and resides in the US. She has preached in Honduras, Costa Rica, and the United States. She has two daughters, a son and a grandson. Her career paths include teaching, consulting, lifestyle coaching business, and medical missionary work. She is a multi-published author and now retired. She, she is committed to working exclusively for the Lord, performing medical missionary work, lifestyle coaching, Bible instructing, and off-grid country living. Dr. Kerr is a humble servant, our third panelist with a wide range of expertise. He prefers not to give a brief bio, but he desires to share his wealth of knowledge pertinent on today's topic. So without any further delay, let us get right into the questions. Number one, how can one be prepared in the event of, let's say, bleeding or fracture? Anyone who, is, who can answer this question as pertinent uh, according to what you, you know, please go ahead. Well, um, what I would recommend, um, this is Dr. McBride, is that you have a first aid kit. If you're talking about being pre prepared, everyone should have a first aid kit. And also being a natural medicine, I recommend uh, not just a traditional first aid kit where you would have um, a gauze a bandage, you would have clean gauze. But in addition to that, you'll have natural remedies such as cayenne pepper. Now, cayenne pepper, charcoal, garlic capsules, if uh, depends on how the bleeding is. If it's a superficial bleed, you can put some cayenne pepper or even lemon juice, believe it or not. People say, well, will it sting? Yes, it will sting just a little bit, but believe it or not, the cayenne pepper stings less than the lemon juice and it would help it to approximate, the wound would approximate. If it's a larger um, gushing, you might have to put a tourniquet on to stop the bleeding. So it would also depend. What I recommend 
everyone, if they're going to do country living, take a first aid course before they go so that they will know the basics. On a platform like this, it's very difficult to tell because um, every situation would be a little bit different, but I would recommend everyone take a basic first aid course. All right, thank you for that, uh, Dr. McBride. So our next question, what advice would you give for persons who desire to preserve their food? Pauline? We're not hearing. Oh, you can make her unmute, you could unmute her because I have you as host, you can make her unmute. Um, only seeing one of her look like the other one is not on. Okay, the one that has a microphone, you can unmute that one, yes. I'm not seeing it, that's why. Okay, no worries. Okay. I'm only seeing one. Okay, okay, I see it. All right, sorry. We should hear, we can hear you now. Okay, can you hear me yes. now? Yes, ma'am. All right. Good afternoon, everyone. I didn't say a prayer, so before I answer this question, I'm going to say a brief prayer. Heavenly Father, I thank you for having us gathered here today for this purpose of helping individuals to learn some of the things that are necessary to do at this time. I pray that you will give me the words to speak, Father. Um, bring things back to my memory so that I'll be able to share what you have already given to me. Bless everyone on this platform at this time, and may we all receive information that are very useful for, uh, uh, for, for this day. In Jesus' holy and precious name, I pray, and I give you thanks for hearing and answering. Amen. Amen. Okay. Yes, so to, there are several ways of preserving our foods and herbs and so forth, and I'm going to start with the one that I learned first and that is using a dehydrator. I have been de um, preserving since I came into the Adventist church and the dehydrator is one of the best ways of preserving food because it dries out every liquid in, in the um, product or the produce or whatever you may want to preserve. And you can keep it for as long as ever if you do not let it get wet. If, if, it's, if there's no moisture in it, it lasts a very long time. So there are different kinds of dehydrators out there, but you want to get one that has a fan in it that will circulate the air as the uh, product is being dried or the produce, whatever you may be drying out. Another form of preservation is of course, the uh, freeze dryer. And we have, uh, have one of those, but we have not used it yet. But that's something that you, that's, that's a little bit more expensive than the dehydrator. But I would advise anyone who is doing country living or wanting to prepare for the future, um, what is to come, the famine and so forth, go ahead and get you a dehydrator now and start drying out um, apples, pears, um, bananas, you know, all the fruits you can. You can even dry the leaves of the vegetables, the green vegetables, and grind them into a powder and keep that as well for um, your use. You also can do the, um, the bath, the, those are the ones. <laughs> um, can somebody remind me what the other, um, the one that you put in the pot and with the hot water and which one is oh, that? Canning. A canning. canning. Yes, I'm so sorry about that. Yes, we you can do canning as well. I have not done any of any canning, and one of the reasons is because you have to have space for canning. You have to have space to store the jars that you can um, use to can. So you can also dry certain things outside, but not in too much sun. You can put it on a porch or a deck if you have and, and dry like that. You can hang your herbs from 
um, a piece of cord, ha hang it on a line outside and get some drying, or you can do it inside your house. I dry a lot of my herbs in the house. And sometimes I place it on a tray, just a tray that I would use to bake on, bake cookies on and, and to dry like that. So there are, there are the ways that, those are the ways that I have been using so far. Amen. I just a piggyback, I saw a question was in the chat or a comment about being off grid and not having power, but you do have solar power, correct? You have solar power. So it's not electrical source, but there is still solar power where you'd be able to use electrical appliances. Yes, I do have um, stove that I you, you know, use um, using the grid, off the grid. My electricity is off the grid. Um, And the question, do you rinse the herbs off before you dry them? Um, before that, um, in addition to once you're dealing with preparation for disaster, it's important that you have alternative energy. A generator is absolutely necessary. It may be a gasoline or a propane gas generator, but mm -hmm. a generator is absolutely necessary. Or if you do not have that, you may want to use an inverter or you may want to use solar panels, um, but there are different um, instruments for alternative energy that you that everybody should consider acquiring one. Yes, that is true because when you're when if you're uh, if you're gen if your um, solar is not generating enough power because you don't have enough sun, then you might need to use your generator, and we have both. We have not had to use our generator as yet, so it's that's a good thing. But we are really conservative in how we use our um, solar. For example, if um, if I want to iron, I would iron in the daytime while the sun is still out and is generating energy. I wouldn't wait until in the evening because then I won't have enough energy to um, be generated to get that done and not affect my battery in a negative way. Okay. Okay, very good. And so the next question, uh, this is for Dr. Kerr. Now, can you please address the reasons for current disasters, different types of potential disasters, basic emergency items, and the general population for natural disasters and also family prep. Okay, um, reasons for disasters. Um, Matthew chapter 24, um, let's look at that. Um, you could push it. Just let me, um, just give me a moment here, let me pull that up. Okay, um, rather than say it off my head, I prefer to read it, have it read. Okay. For nations. Um, the reason for disaster, you could read it. For nations shall rise against nations and kingdom against kingdom, and there shall be famines and pestilences and earthquakes in diverse places. Verse 8 says, all these are the beginning of sorrows. Verse 9, then shall they deliver you up to be afflicted and shall kill you, and they shall be hated of all nations for my name's sake. Verse 10, and then shall many be offended and shall betray one another and shall hate one another. Verse 11, and Many false prophets shall rise and shall deceive many. Go to the great country of the sea. That's okay. That's um, one thing that Jesus gave. So the reason why we are having disasters is because we are living in the last days of Earth's history. Another reason is that Satan knows that his time is short. Curtis. Curtis. Satan knows that his time is short, and as a result, with vengeance and anger, he has unleashed his fury of wickedness upon the world. Yes. Listen to this. 
Satan works through the elements also to garner his harvest of unprepared souls. He has studied the secrets of the laboratories of nature and he uses all his power to control the elements as far as God allows. While appearing to the children of men as a great physician you can, who can heal all their maladies, he will bring disease and disaster until popular cities are reduced to ruin and desolation. This is Great Controversy, page 590. So um, the, 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 these, these are the basic reasons um, Satan is behind um, disasters, even though um, the insurance company tell you it's an act of God. It's Satan who is behind it. And as we get closer to the coming of Jesus Christ, these would increase in intensity and frequency. So it's not a matter of if, it's a matter of when. They are definitely coming and would get worse and worse. Um, because of that, there are different types of disasters. We have natural disasters. Um, we have technological disasters. We have international crises. And we also have um, commercial disasters. Under natural disasters, um, you have things like um, tornadoes, um, ice storms, hurricanes, um, avalanches, um, tsunamis, earthquakes, mm -hmm. volcanoes, um, under natural disaster. On the industrial, you have um, mine accidents, you have nuclear accidents, you have um, train wrecks, you have truck or accident um, with these truckers on the highway. Um, then you have um, international crises like we are having right now, wars, rumors of wars, and um, you also have, so you name it, there's no part of the world that is immune from disaster. Consequently, everybody needs to be in a state of readiness. There are two types of readiness for disasters. One is your the disaster may cause you to have to shelter in place, and that requires one type of preparation. There's another type where the disaster may necessitate your evacuation, and that requires a different type of preparation. Um, I don't know if you want me to get into those right now, or you would want me to do that later. Oh, uh, you can definitely provide this now. Yes. Okay. Um, if you for if you have to shelter in place. For example, like COVID was one, and um, based on what they are saying, it's going to get worse. Situation is going to get worse. It may not be COVID. It can be. It may be anything else. But if you have to shelter in place, the recommendation is that you need to stockpile enough supplies for an absolute minimum of one month for your family. Absolute minimum. Um, you should stockpile an adequate supply of food in various forms. You should have a lot of dry beans and peas and grains and corn, um, baking supplies, um, rice and pastas, cooking supplies, breakfast supplies. You should store all those, have at least one month supplies. Canned food, and if you're storing canned food, make sure you have at least two can openers and one should be manual. Do not depend on electric can openers in times of disaster. Um, make sure that you store adequate supply of water. The minimum requirement is one gallon per person per day for the, end, for the time of the disaster. And you would want to store water for general use and water for consumption consumption that is drinking and cooking and they may be different if rain is falling and you have a convenient container you can collect rain water once you are not living in a highly industrial area and even though you are after the first shower of rain pretty much that water is as good as probably what would flow through to your faucet Another thing you may want to do for those of you who do a lot of baking, yeah. 
If you bake bread, what you may want to do is to, when once the bread is cold, you slice the bread up and put it ah. back into the oven at about 200 degrees Fahrenheit, 190 degree, degrees Fahrenheit. Or if you have a dehydrator, you put it there and you remove all the moisture from that bread and that bread would last forever. So you make sure you do that. Make sure you have, um, if you, make sure that you acquire a freezer. And I, let me say something about that. Make sure that you have a freezer. And you remember I mentioned about the generator and make sure that your freezer is in proper working condition. You're muted. Um, go ahead. Yes, go ahead, please. I'm not sure from what point I got muted. Uh, but yes, you want to start back about 30 seconds. Okay, just make sure you have a freezer and that it is well stocked with supplies. The, 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 the more food you put in the freezer is the better everything will freeze. So if you have a freezer that's half empty, you're wasting time and energy. Then another thing if um, you would want to observe is you need to know where your nearest dry ice factory is and establish um, communication and build a relationship with your nearest dry ice factory. So in the case of disaster, if power is knocked out, then you can purchase dry ice. Be careful because it will burn. So you handle it with a glove. You can fold it in paper, newspaper, whatever, and you put a few blocks of dry ice to the bottom of your freezer. You keep it closed and everything will stay intact for 48 hours, minimum. Um, you can also use dry ice in your refrigerator. You do the same thing and everything will remain just as though your refrigerator is powered. If you have an ice box or a cooler, you can also put dry ice in the bottom and then you put a sheet of paper or cardboard and you put your food on top of that, put another block on top and it will keep everything. You just make sure that the dry ice is not, um, in, is not touching your food supplies. Um, in addition to that, I recommend that if you are living in the North, like in Quebec where you are, that you invest in alternative heating. Again, you have to look at state regulate your um, state regulations. I know in New York, in some states, it's allowed. One that we highly recommend is a, what is it? Um, yeah, what's the heater? It's a dura, it's called a dura heat. It's a kerosene generated heater. It is fantastic. You have one of those and you can heat your whole house by heating one room, closing it, heating another room, closing it. If you have a basement, then you put it in your basement and your lines would never be frozen. Portable um, there are portable propane heaters you may use and um, that also would be helpful. And these are available at your um, Target store. The Dura Heat is available at, um, cost, at um, Lowe's and Home Depot. They're available there. So that takes care of heater. Um, food, so, portable, you also have portable solar heaters where you can just have a, a portable um, solar panel and you can connect it to whatever you need to have power that if you do not have solar attached to your property. In addition to that, um, you may want to make sure that if you have a distillation um, water system, that would also be helpful. If you don't have, you can in, invent one. It's not easy, it's not difficult to invent. But, so in case you do not have adequate supply of um, clean drinking water, you may want to um, distill your water. Um, the other thing too, you need to know your, your evacuation route in your municipality or your community. Um, I do not know for you in Quebec, but I know in the United States, all your evacuation routes are painted. They are white signs on blue backgrounds with an arrow. 
and you just have to follow the direction. It will take you to a safe area um, for evacuation. Um, medication process supplies. What? Medication. The other thing um, Dr. Mark Bride mentioned in preparation for disaster, you need medication. Also check in with your physician or specialist or whoever if you have health challenges in anticipation for disaster and your fa local pharmacists and they would advise you on your medication. Um, if you use um, devices like hearing aids, etc., make sure that you have adequate supply of batteries Make sure you have a good flashlight and preferably a flashlight that is rechargeable or uses rechargeable batteries or has a crank or that can be powered or there's a, another type of flashlight which lights by just vibration and that, that charges it. Make sure that you have a good radio um, that has shortwave, that have a television station and the weather channel uh, because you would need to have announcements from the government. And these radios make sure that they are multi-powered. For example, have a radio that, that uses battery, uses electricity, has a rechargeable battery, has a solar panel, and also have a crank to power it. They are readily available. Um, so you need to have a good radio and the list goes on and on, but let me hold there for now. Okay, very good. And uh, uh, one of the questions, before we, we address the audience questions, there's a question here as well. General observations relative to disaster preparation, I think you touched a bit on that, um, but family preparation for natural disaster. Okay, in terms of family preparation. Yes. It's important that you establish a communication system for your family. There should be an out of state number that everybody has and know. So in the event of a disaster, rather than trying to contact each person, they call that number and register with that number, their situation where they are and any um, issues they may have. So head of house would call that number and get all the information that is ne necessary. The other thing that's of importance, now that it's peacetime before it gets worse, make sure that all your important documents are copied and stored. You may want to scan them and store them on a CD and have one mailed to a trusted person somewhere. Your important documents would include your driver's license, your insurance documents, your deeds, titles, your stocks, your bonds, everything, all certificates, everything, have them um, scanned and stored or have duplicate copies. Um, if you have nowhere to store it, try to acquire a vault um, that is um, rated for both fire and water. If you don't have that, you can store all your documents in a front load washing machine not a top load, a front load um, washing machine, or you can also store your important documents in a dishwasher. You just make sure you plug off the outlet hose and you can store your documents there. Another thing um, that we recommended is that for every family, make sure that you have in your house at least $100 plus $50 for each member of the family. Reflecting on that, I think it's time that we change that. It should be a minimum of $500 <laughs> and $100 for every member of family because during times of disaster, your credit card, your checks, etc., will be of no use. You may not be able to access your ATM. And if you need to do transaction, that's how you would have to do it. In addition to that, make sure that you are signed up with one of these money transfer companies, whether it be Zelle or PayPal or one of them in case you have to send money to a loved one somewhere or they have to send money to you. And interestingly, you may be surprised that you can send money through Walmart. They have that facility also. 
Uh, make sure that you have um, adequate supply of blankets, um, clothing, bedding. Um, if you have pets, um, make sure that you have adequate supplies for them. If you have um, babies, small children, make sure that you store adequate supply of food for, um, for them. Um, do not take chances. Just keep storing stuff and keep replacing it as time goes by. Um, it's quite possible at any time that there can be a run on the stores and the shelves can be empty and you do not have anything to happen. Apart from that, because of international crises, because of disaster, the shipping, the shipping lanes can be destroyed or stalled or damaged. Aircrafts may not fly, and that could mean a lack of supplies. So now that it's time of peace, every time you go to the supermarket, make sure that you, in purchasing your, your supplies for this week or next week or whenever, you also purchase supplies for emergency. Very good. Thank you for that. Uh, there's a question in terms also of, so basic emergency items, tangibly speaking, how can one put together a medical emergency kit? That would be Dr. Mark Bride. All I would add to that is make sure you have garlic, cayenne, pepper, and the charcoal. Charcoal. Yeah, Dr. that's what Mabride I would... Dr. Mabride would do the rest. <laughs> yeah, that's what I was going to say. Those are the three basic things that I recommend that everyone should have with them. Um, but what I'd like to also share with you, if I could share my screen and they can screenshot it, is some natural remedies formulas that they can do. So in that, in your kit, we recommend, in addition to those things that um, was just mentioned, you can have things like peppermint oil, eucalyptus oil, um, uh, the cayenne pepper that was mentioned. Those are the basic three that I would recommend everyone have, charcoal, cayenne pepper, and garlic capsules or actual uh, garlic itself. Now, I also recommend that, you know, if you're going to be in the country and you're not going to be close to um, um, get medical care, there's some minor things that uh, you can do, uh, like, for instance, a toothache remedy. And I'm going to just share that if you, I can share my screen and they can screenshot it. Um, your host, you're able to share your screen. Yes. Yeah. Okay. So, uh, okay. So the cayenne pepper is something that I recommend that everyone has because it can be used for so many different things. It can be used for pain. It can be used for bleeding, as we mentioned before. If you think someone is having a stroke or they might be having a, um, a heart attack, you can put some cayenne pepper under the tongue. So that is something that everyone, I believe, should have. And here, looking at this um, and, and um, charcoal, charcoal is the other thing that everyone should have. Charcoal can be used internally and externally, as can the cayenne pepper. Uh, internally, if someone has an upset stomach, if there's an accidental poisoning, um, even if you think there might be some bleeding going on, you can use charcoal internally. Externally, again, if there's a, if someone has gotten bitten by insect or snake, <coughs> excuse me, any kind of contusion where there might be some um, uh, uh, blood under the skin, you can make a charcoal poultice, even pain, and you can put it in the area where the pain is, and that can help. Um, this right here is a, is a toothache remedy. And these, I, I recommend these simple remedies. I'm going to share several of them. You can screenshot them. Uh, when you're in living in the country or even in a disaster and you're not able to get to um, like medical care, a toothache. I don't know if any of you ever had a really bad toothache. <laughs> I've had a really, really bad toothache and it just feels like you just want to rip the tooth out your, your mouth. But this is something that will be able to help until you can get further um, treatment. And this is one half teaspoon of activated charcoal, which is the loose activated charcoal, as was recommended before. Everyone should have this. A pinch of cayenne pepper, five to 10 drops of peppermint oil and five drops of clove oil. And this will be all mixed together. And if you had 
a small piece of cheesecloth or even like a gauze bandage. You mix it, put it in there, and then put like a little pouch, put it on the area or on the tooth that's hurting and hold it in place and it will bring some relief. Okay, um, the next one, uh, this is a heavy metal detox now. Um, I would hope there wouldn't be any natural disasters where there's heavy metals involved, but you know, you never know, like, uh, uh, the nuclear disaster. This is something that you can do to help get pull heavy metals and detox out of the body. I also recommend, also recommend that these are foods that you should be eating on a regular basis. Let your foods be your medicine. These foods here all help to detox and cleanse the body. I use lemon just about every day, cilantro, parsley, just about every day, ginger. We recommend you let your foods be your medicine. And again, this is a heavy metal, metal detox that can be used, a bunch of uh, um, cilantro, uh, parsley, one half of a large lemon, one half of a large cucumber, one inch of a ginger, a handful of kale. And uh, after the natural disaster, after you've been exposed, you want to continue drinking this drink daily for one to three months. Okay, for anemia, uh, for those that are having um, issues with low blood um, blood iron, this will actually help. This tonic will help to bring that uh, iron uptake in, iron intake up. And I experienced this myself personally. I had to have a surgery and I was losing um well, I was losing blood, but my, my blood count was going down. And they told me the next day I was going to have to have a transfusion. And I was really upset because I said, well, why didn't they tell me this before? But my husband said, if they had told me before, they would have been able to see what they saw. And what, what we did was my husband went home and he mixed this formula, equal parts of unsulfurated molasses, um, tart jerry juice concentrate and liquid chlorophyll. Now the normal doses you see there is three to four tablespoons, but because it's food and it's nothing that's going to harm you unless you're diabetic, you know, the cherry juice uh, and the molasses has sugar, but I'm not diabetic, thank God. So I actually drank this like you would drink. I had a cup next to me. It was my medicine at the time. And when they would come in, the doctors want to know, well, what is that? And I told them, this is my blood transfusion. The next day they were all shocked. Instead of my, every day I was dropping two points. Instead of dropping two points, I dropped point two and came right back up the next day. The doctor came in and she said, I have to tell you, when you told me about this um, natural blood transfusion, I was very very skeptical. She said, but you made a believer out of me because I knew of nothing else that would bring up your hemoglobin in such a short time other than a blood transfusion. So God's way, this I can guarantee works because I'm a living example. And many people I know that have used this um, has helped them again. So when you're doing country living, when you're doing talking about disaster preparedness, you not have access to um, conventional medicines. These are the things that you need to know and you need to have available, not only for yourself, but also to be able to help some other people. Now I'm just gonna go, and this is um, an external formula that helps with pain. If you have pain anywhere in the body, um, women have also used it on their breasts. Um, but for pain, it's, it's, it's something that um, I found external, like a arthritis pain in the joints. Um, this is a formula that can be used. One half cup of black Jamaican castor oil, one quarter cup of extra virgin organic cold plush coconut oil, 20 drops of frankincense and 10 to 15 drops of peppermint oil. Now, I originally was using this um, to help with scarring or to prevent scarring and it can do that also, but we found that it had some other um, things that help. It helped women that have uh, uh, um, lumpy breasts. It helped with that. It helped pain in breasts, any pain in the breast, And it also helped joint pain for arthritis pain. This formula was very, very helpful. So when we look at basic um, first aid kit, I'm, I have some more, but I don't want to take up all the time. Um, when we take a look at a natural basic first aid kit, the three things that every first aid kit should have, I recommend is the charcoal, the cayenne, and the garlic capsules. Then you can always add things like the essential oils, the various essential oils um, uh, to that, and um, um, uh, peppermint and uh, ginger, 
They're just basic things that can be utilized. But out of everything else, if you have nothing else, those three should be in every, actually, I recommend everyone have them in their home, charcoal, cayenne pepper, and garlic capsules. All right. Thank you for that. And I always make sure I have my first aid kit in my car and in the house, just to add to what Dr. McBride is saying. You want to keep one in your vehicle and in your house. And I always have my charcoal, my cayenne pepper. So yes, I second that, uh, Dr. McBride. Uh, thanks for sharing that. And many women out there who are suffering from, from anemia, you may want to look into that as well. All right. So my next question brings me to this. What advice would you give for persons afraid of moving to the country? And tell us about off-grid living. Perfect love casteth out all fear. Amen. The other thing we need to observe is, it's not what I like and what I want, but what is God's will for my life? Because ultimately it's where we spend eternity. It's not comfort in this life, but it's preparation for the life to come. And wherever God leads, we should be willing to follow. For this quarter, we are studying about Abram and Abraham and God calling him out of the Ur of the Chaldees. When he was back in his homeland, he lived in luxury and comfort. And God called him out to go to a place that he did not know, but he stepped out in faith. And if God called you to go to the country, God has a place reserved and preserved for you. Not based on your reckoning, but based on his design. And you would be able to sing the song, Anywhere with Jesus, I can safely go. He who, kept, kept, who, he who is keeping you in the city is more than qualified to keep you in the country. He will take care of you. Just trust him. Thank you for that, uh, Dr. Kerr. And Pauline, you want to address that with our audience. Um, I think your audio mic is, um, Dr. McBar, you want to look into your other audio for us? Okay, doing that right now. Thank you. But she's co-host, so she can unmute. Oh, she just lost the co-host. Okay, I unmute. I'm going to make you back co-host in that line as well. Perfect. Thank awesome. It's not letting me. Un <laughs> okay, well, there you go. Well, okay. While they work on that, let, can hear. let me add, um, because a question may come up. Okay. It's important that you acquire, you build or acquire a go bag for emergency. And there are certain items should be in your go bag, like food, water, radio, flashlight, a whistle, um, a sleeping bag. There are some small, there are some small um, sleeping bags. Um, they are, what do you call them? Um, blankets, they have the, the little yeah, blankets. Yeah. Yes, those are the blankets. You have the blankets which can fit in your pocket. Mm -hmm. um, they are, you should build your own. If you do not want to build your own, you can purchase one for an individual, for two family, three family, four family. They are available. Um, you can get them from um, one company called Quick Care. And they come fully stocked with everything, even chlorine tablets in case you have to um, chlorinate your water. Um, that's also available. So you should try to acquire one of those and put them not far from the front door of your house. So in case you have to leave, you just pick it up and go. You don't have to look for it. And you should all have one in your vehicle. Um, these are critically important. In, a, um, in addition to that, um, there are a number of companies, and I could share that with you later, where you can get emergency supplies. But towards the end, I can um, share with you some of those companies. I also got mine on Amazon. Amazon also has a, a vast array of um, emergency yeah. supplies. I got mine on Amazon. But you have in Amazon, you have to know what you're looking for. Uh, but you can go to Google and just look for companies. I could give you a list of some companies too. Is Pauline ready yet? Okay, perfect. So Pauline, are you, you ready to answer that question? Thank you, Dr. Kerr. 
you will. Okay, could you ask the question again, please? What's the question again? Yeah, so the question is, uh, first we asked about the country living and now the other question was uh, uh, off-grid living. Can you tell our viewers about off-grid living, practically speaking? Oh, Practic yes, off-grid living. <laughs> It is not easy. I'm not going to say it's easy, especially for people who are used to what we, you know, what you're used to right now, living with all of the conveniences of having everything right there. Um, I have lived in the country before. So to me, it is a pleasure. It's like going back to what I'm used to. At growing up, I grew up in the country and I was able to be out in nature all the time, picking fruits and having all those, um, you know, picking up worms and all of those things, even though I didn't like worm. But I would say that's the best place to be. Um, Sister White has put it in her writing as I'm listening to um, Dr. Kerr right now. I'm hoping that everyone is taking notes of what he's saying because I have this little book, Country Living, in front of me because I want to read something from it to you. Um, Sister White says, few realize the importance of shunning so far as possible, all associations unfriendly to religious life. In choosing their surroundings, few make their spiritual prosperity the first consideration. When you're in the country, I tell you, it is a test of faith. It is, it, this is where you, God, you see that God's working on your character and he puts things in your place to test you every single day. And you know that you're preparing for eternity when you're in the country. When you go out in nature, you are appreciative of the things you see, the different birds. I mean, there are so many animals, so many different things you see. I look out in my backyard, there is there are deer, you know, so, uh, like sometimes seven, eight of them, um, turkeys, turtles. Um, and as I said before, many, many different um, species of birds. And then the, the herbs, the trees, the plants, everything gives you this peace. You know, you walk out in your backyard and you don't have to worry about anything. You can look up and say, thank you, Lord, for this quietness. And, you know, Sister White further says that again and again, the Lord has instructed that our people are to take their families away from the cities into the country where they can raise their own provision. See, that's one of the big thing for us to raise our provision for the future problem of buying and selling will be a very serious one. We should now begin to heed the instructions of the instruction given to us over and over again. And this, this is, listen to the instruction. This says, get out of the cities into rural districts where the houses are not crowded closely together and where you will be free from the interference of the enemies. So those are some of the reasons to be in the country. God loves us and he wants the best for us. And the country living, I could say, is the best. But there are certain things you have to make sure you look out for before you move to the country, make sure you have certain things that you may not be able to find readily here in the country. So start planning, packing, you know, preparing. And with all of this, prayer. Prayer is the thing that you want to use first. You want to do first, asking God, because God already told you to move to the country. So now you want to ask him how, what you need to be doing. And, you know, as I told um, my daughter when she wanted to move, I said, the Lord says, just start packing. So if you start throwing things out now that you don't need and you won't end up like me because I have a storage here still with things that I need to go through, but start throwing things out and get, buy those things. You can go thrifting, go to the thrift store and buy, see if you can find you know, manual things like manual nutcrackers, you know, manual um, grinders and so forth, just to get them at a cheaper price than if you have to buy them from Amazon or so forth. So start doing those things, collecting those things that you know you would need to use 
if you're off grid, if you don't have electricity, there's going to be a time when we will not have electricity. And that's the way you have to think in order to prepare for what is to come. And I hope I've answered that question. If I have not, let me know. Um, I'm not looking at my notes or anything. I just want to go freely from my memory and from what the experience that I've had. So that's it. Did I answer that question, sister? Or is there anything yes. else I need to say? Okay. Uh, yes. So basically, <laughs> um, yeah, that's good. So let's say someone now they're learning to go into the country and what would you give an advice for someone like, let's say, who's a single parent or single woman, for example? You know, oftentimes yeah. they say, oh, I have to wait. I have to have a companion to move or um, there are comments in terms of, oh, but I, I don't know. What would you give advice for persons who are in this situation? Do not go by yourself. I know, I've, you know, I look at a lot of um, YouTube videos and there's this one girl by myth and she's a young girl and she's out in the country by herself. And she does everything. She, and I mean, it's in it's where you get snow, high, you know, high, heavy snow. And she's doing this by herself. And I watched her over the years, but now she's married, thank Lord. But I would say to a single woman, do not go by yourself. And the reason that is because there are several reasons. And one is when you get to the country, you are you are going to be having you are going to be having to do things for yourself that you you haven't done before. And some of these things are manual, you know, right now my shoulders hurt because I've been doing some of the things that I've never done, you know, using um, digging holes and stuff like that. So try and have a partner move in with other people, you know, um, maybe move with a couple of people who are of like mind and so forth. But it's very difficult for uh, it would be very difficult for one individual then you have um it's dark for example it's dark at night so i don't know if you would be wanting to be in a dark place or by the place that is dark doesn't have electricity no street light or anything by yourself so those are the things to think about um before before you move and another advice i want to give here is when you are going to move to a place, please go there and spend some time before you decide to that that's the place you want to be. Even though you have prayed and asked the Lord to, because I'm expecting that you're doing that, even though you have prayed and you have asked the Lord to direct you, to send you where he wants you to, I would say, make sure that you go there, visit the place at night, see what it looks like, what's happening, what's going on there. And if you are able to stay there, for a while before you decide that you're going to purchase in that area or that particular in that particular area. I think that's very important. I'm advising you. And another thing that um, Sister White says is that you should not be able to see your neighbor. Make sure you, you, give, you pay close attention to that one. Do not get a place in the country where you can look out the door and see your neighbor. So um, make sure, and, and when you're buying, make sure you, you know you're buying enough to give this coverage around you because another thing that can happen, and that has happened to me in the past where we lived, we lived in, in uh, Virginia and this place is called Sherwood Forest. And it was so much forest around us and we felt so, we liked it. One day I came in from work and all of the trees were cut down behind me and there was all this light coming in. Not that I don't like light, but I was so disappointed in seeing that. And so you want to make sure you're thinking about all those things um, before you purchase anywhere. Okay. Oh, okay. Very good. Thanks for sharing mm -hmm. that. And it's also, she says something very important. You also want to make sure you live in an area where there's other like-minded people in proximity. Yes. It's half an hour away or even a, uh, anywhere from that range is, is very good. It's important because if ever, let's say, you know, as she's mentioned, is a very good point. And I think somebody asked, when I address all the audience questions, we're just actually almost ending an arc, my questions here, and then we'll address the audiences very shortly. Um, where can our viewers, and this is to everybody here, who, how can our viewers support your ministry or partner with you in your ministry? Those that, that are, of course, that's pertinent to your question. To those okay. Questions. I have put my uh, I have put my email in the chat. 
and you can get it there. Um, I can put it in again. And I see a question from Tamar. Tamar, yeah. Yes. And Tamar, one of the reasons you don't want your neighbor to um, be so close to your neighbor is because your neighbor might not be like-minded, of like-minded. Your neighbor might be doing things, illegal things. They might be doing things to harass you, to make you uncomfortable. They might be doing things because they're prejudiced. If, they're, if you are not able to see them, that's okay. But when you have to see them, that's, that can be a problem. That's very good. That was answer your question, Tamar. Okay, awesome. I did note all the questions from our audience. Yes, eliminate distractions. Exactly. A comment from our audience. Correct. Yes. Very important. With, mm -hmm. And it's also good to know your neighbors. So it's very important too. And another thing to address, to add to Sister Pauline, it's important um, why when God puts you in the country that you're not there just to hide. You're there to be a light, right? Because God does not want us, Jesus does not want us to be a light under a bushel, but be on the table stand, right? So wherever we go, we need to be a light. And you could be surprised. God could use even our neighbors to help. If let's say you're a lady, I met a lady, I remember, she's all by herself, very, you know, elderly lady. And let me tell you, I was impressed of the things that she does. She's been there for so many years. Um, but let's say if you're in a situation now, you're in the country and, um, you know, there's manual labor involved. God will send you even helpers to help you. I know people who, for example, will help mow your land. There's people that actually do that or help do the snow for you as well. God can do that as well. So God can do the, God can do the impossible. Mm -hmm. uh, but we must pray. As Sister Pauline said, we must pray and make sure it's God that sends us there and not our own mm -hmm. feelings or out of fear. Never move out of fear because that, that's another mistake. A lot of people end up moving back into the city because they precipitated or they anticipated as well their move. So that's a very important mm -hmm. point. You definitely want to plan wisely and get to know about country living and, and so forth. Um, okay, awesome. So there's another question here. So yes, where can our viewers support you? If you could share your, oh. your information. Some people were asking your contact info, if, if you're okay with it, uh, to those who... It's okay, I guess I'll put that in here again. And I put my information in again. You sent uh, an email to the... And you may want to say out loud for, the, for our YouTube viewers, because there's people on YouTube that are watching as well, live. Okay, it's the Vine health 18 at gmail.com so the vine 18 at gmail.com so it's in the chat it's the uh, vine health the vine health okay i just put it in the chat well it went to um let me put that again it went to an individual instead of going to no, I, I did it for you general so now okay for, thank you. you does everybody see that the vine t-h-e-v-i-n-e -E, health 18 at gmail.com and dr mcbride are would you like to provide if you're comfortable to provide your details with our audience oh okay i see it okay so she has here a n e w u health.org yes i'll repeat a new u health.org a new then the letter u health.org and to those who are, I did see some questions in the audience. Um, there will be, this is live re recorded. So it will, if you need to watch it back again, you're able to do so on my YouTube channel, which is uh, Poetry of Love Media. Just uh, write that, just type Poetry of Love Media or Google it and you'll find my channel there. Um, mm -hmm. Okay, well, let's address the, uh, the questions from our audience. Yeah, uh, I see. I see okay. a few, and I actually pasted some here. So first question from the beginning that I, I noted, the person is asking, how do you make the bread wrinkle again if you dehydrate it? How do you make it wrinkle again? Yeah, that's the, the question. The bread asking. will not come back to what it was before, but it would be edible. And um, if you want, you can hydrate it, but it will not come back to what it was before. But all the nutrients would remain in it and it's 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 not hard to eat it's 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 great try it <laughs> you'll love it <laughs> okay great hope that answered your question 
Okay, next question. What can you use for cooling the house? And somebody asked us a follow-up question, alternative cooling of the house, so alternative cooling. I could start with that one. Um, well, I have, well, I use solar, so I still do have a little um, a system that brings heat, but it's through the solar. But I also have fans that are battery operated. And um, I would like to know if there are other things that are available myself, yes. But yeah, those two things. Okay, awesome. Okay, the next question from the audience I have here, it says, please repeat the name or type of heater. And I think it was Dr. Kerr that I touched on it. The person would like you to repeat again, that name of the heater. D U R A dash heat, Dura heat. Dura heat. It's available at Home Depot and at Lowe's. Um, it uses kerosene, but not regular kerosene. It's K1 kerosene. The reason why you have to use K1 kerosene is that K1, K1 kerosene produces absolutely no fumes. So you can use it indoor. There are no fumes, no soot. It's clean burning. And that kerosene is also available at Home Depot and Lowe's. I have personally used it. It's phenomenal. Okay, awesome. Thank you. As a matter of fact, we had an evangelistic meeting once in a big hall, and we used just one of those to heat the entire hall. And we had to turn it off because the place got too hot. Hmm. And this was in winter in the north. So that's important. And uh, as a comment from the audience, I attend a small country church and every Sunday we come together at a member's home to help them prepare their gardens for planting food. There's another thing I want to add and address um, in terms of have coming together with like-minded people um, to get a perhaps a piece of land as well where you could grow, grow it as, a, as, a, as a small community. That's just one idea, like two to three families that are within proximity. That's another idea I just want to, to add and share. Uh, is there any other questions from our audience that we did, that we missed? Oh, someone, this can pep oh go ahead, sorry, go ahead. Someone, yes, yeah, someone mentioned about peppermint oil, but any essential oils that are taken internally, it should say on the bottle, it should say either dietary supplement or wild crafted. Not all essential oils can be taken e internally. It must specify specifically, I would recommend that it says it. There is food grade frankincense, there's food grade, anything that you put on your skin externally, I recommend that you try to get food grade and alcohol free. Because even though you're not taking it internally, your skin absorbs um, any toxins that could possibly be there. So anytime I, I recommend getting food grade, the, um, the different uh, peppermint oil, eucalyptus oil, if you're going to take it internally, if you're going to rub it on your skin, try to get the food grade. Very good. Thank you, Dr. McBride. And uh, there's a question I see here, Dr. Kerr. Okay, Dr. Kerr, please give the info regarding the companies you mentioned earlier. Okay, um, let me... Costco is one. BJ's. Um, Walgreens. Let me give you a list here. Um, yeah. Um, Maydayfoods.com. Mayday, M-A-Y-D-A-Y, Maydayfoods.com. Quake, K-Q-U-A-K-E, K-A-R-E, QuakeCare.com. And Amazon.com is another good Shop source. Shop for emergency supplies. Shopforemergencysupplies.com. Life Secure Emergency Solutions. Uh, pretty much you can just Google, you can just Google emergency 
um, disaster emergency supplies, and all these will come up. And you, the, the, the beautiful thing about it is that all these companies list the things that they supply, and you can choose some, you can put your own package together, and some sell packages. So it's very, it's, it's very user friendly, um, these companies that oh, do these things. Another thing I would also recommend is that you go to, um, what is it? .gov. it ready .gov. Ready.gov. Ready.gov. Ready.gov or Ready America. These are two different sites and it would give you a lot of um, information in terms of preparing for disaster. Ready America or ready.gov. Also American Red Cross um, is another place you can go to find information. Um, ready.gov would list the different disasters and how you prepare for each one because some require unique preparation. But we are all um, vulnerable for disaster, so we all need to live in a state of readiness. I fully agree, 110%. And feel free to put my email in the chat if anybody needs to contact me. I'd be more than happy to dialogue with them. Oh, yes. What is your email, please, so that we could uh, address it? Yeah. A as in king, Z as in zebra, T as in today, mm -hmm. Y as in yesterday, W as in Wednesday, Q as in question at outlook.com. So I just typed it in the chat. And this meeting is recorded once again, and you can go to Poetry of Love Media and you could get all this information on recording. Um, now there's a question from our audience that we just overlooked. What if you live in an area where racism is high? Get out. <laughs> That's what I would say. Why would you do that? <laughs> um, why would you do what? You live in an area where racism is high. You as a colored person, the only one that's there, and you know the area that you're in is racism is high. Don't you um, think the... Uh, <laughs> I think the Lord would protect you wherever you are. If God I sent believe, you there to minister, that's fine. But if God didn't send you there, get out. Yeah, yeah that's what I think. Yes. Yes. Yeah, yeah. I you see. Yeah, I agree. Because the other thing is this. We say, I'm going to put my hand in the fire. and Lord, please don't burn me. That's mm -hmm. different than if your hand slipped and fell in the fire and you didn't know. But if you know ahead of time that that's an area that's racist, I would not recommend going right. there. No. Unless, unless, like, you know for sure the Lord is telling you to do it. The other thing we need to observe is that some people who we um, brand as racist, it's not that they are necessarily racist is that they have not had the privilege of encountering and meeting other people who are of different races, so they do not trust. But when they get to realize that the color of the skin um, does not change the person, does not determine the personality, they would come to, they would learn to appreciate that people who look differently are uh, as just as they are or even better. So some mm -hmm. people just need to have exposure to people of other races, races and other tribes and other ethnic communities. Some people are just the way they are because of, and I'm using this word guardedly, because of ignorance. They don't Amen. know, they don't know. But when they come to be exposed to, to people, Christian people, they would wonder if you're a human being or you're an angel just dropped from the sky. Hey, I 110 yeah. percent agree because I am actually a, a living testimony. Oh, yes. I have a living testimony to that because uh, I oh, live. Okay. Oh, sorry. I think somebody. Can you please mute your mic? Okay. Have you? Okay. You too. Okay. Sorry about that. Uh, I can testify because uh, yes, uh, I live in a, in a in a country where I'm the minority, and let me tell you, I did foster great friendships here and i still do and i could testify um those who may not know it's ignorance uh, again they just need to see christ in you christ method alone is the only winning there's no see the bible never you even christ broke the barrier of racism through his just through his um his method the way he just 
mingled. He sought their good. And then he says, you know, he won their confidence. And then he says, okay, follow me. Again, it comes back to, did God send you there? And second, um, we must trust God in all things. And he will use you wherever you are. Every, anywhere with Jesus, I can safely go. Minister to their needs, won their confidence. Then he said, follow me. That's right. It's only Christ's method alone that, that wins. It's not us, it's Christ and Christ alone in us. That does Amen. the work. Amen. That's right. All right. So uh, anybody else from our audience who would like to ask these panels any questions that are pressing, uh, please feel free. I will, uh, if you type in the chat, we could address it. And if not, uh, we probably could, um, you could share any closing final words for our viewers, any favorite Bible verses to encourage our viewers. If there's no, any other questions from our audience. Oh, um, this is here. Oh, go ahead, sorry. All right, I just wanted to close out in saying that what I recommend before anyone does country living is they take a, a CPR class and they also take a, um, a, a first aid class and a medical missionary training class if they can find one. Those three classes are some of the things that they can do to prepare um, for country living. I think the key in country living also is preparation ahead of time. I know many people that have um, gotten into country living without the appropriate research and they ended up coming right back. So I think it's the key. Yes, God is calling us all, but take a step-by-step -step guide. I know um, Sister Lewinson and her daughter offered a class that actually had like a checklist of things that they recommended individuals do so that you know you have these things in place. And this way you have a, and of course you're going with God, be wise as a serpent, harmless as a dove. So even though we know that God is leading us to do something, we also have to do a certain amount of preparation on our part as well. Amen. And Dr. McBride, you want to share with our viewers, uh, do you have a future upcoming class that you'd like to talk about? Um, I believe the Sabbath has already, we're Eastern time here, so uh, it should be, Sabbath has already ended, I believe. You may want to address. Your... Well, the class that we are actually have coming up tomorrow, and it's not too late to register for it, is a trauma class. It's um, it's dealing with trauma yourself and also how to help others with trauma as well. And I think that that is so important because with the increasing, with the increase of natural disasters, as you mentioned that we are servants, we ourselves will encounter trauma and we will definitely encounter others that have to have dealt with trauma. And um, what we try to do on our platform is to prepare for all different uh, situations. So that class is being offered. It's not too late. People can sign up and it's for donation of any size. We try to make all of our courses aff affordable to everyone. And you can go to anewyouhealth.org and scroll down to um, the class and sign up for a donation of any size. The class is tomorrow from 10 a.m. to 1 p.m. Mm -hmm. And Dr. Lightbody, who is a, uh, a trained trauma coach of over 25 years, is the one that will be teaching the class. And we recommend everyone should take that class because if you've never encountered trauma, it's only a matter of time in the world that we live in. It's not F but when, and you'll be able to help yourself as well as to help others, family members, friends, neighbors, who might be also encountering uh, or involved with any kind of trauma. So, Very great. Thank you for sharing that, uh, Dr. McBride. That's really important you, you address that because people need to understand how to even cope with trauma, especially after a disaster, how to cope with, let's say, someone who loses their home or damages and so forth. And Along with, uh, as she shared about the first aid kit, you definitely want to learn to take that and also prepare your, your uh, kit. But it's also important to learn how to start a fire if, let's say, or have, like, you know, they talked about the flashlights and so forth. It's important because I remember, I praise God, you know, our, my mom sent us to the air cadets. Uh, even though at times when we were younger, we didn't see the significance. But looking back, I see the great significance of it to learn practical survival tips in any given situation. Uh, what to do if you encounter a, a wildlife and so forth, things that they train us in when we were in the air cadets and so forth, and just how to start a fire if you were lost in the woods, what to look for and so forth, uh, and, and learning to use a compass. These are important things to learn also when you're in the country, which I also encourage as well to our viewers. Um, 
There's a question I want to address. I saw somebody popped up. It says here, what emergency radio did you say would be good? I have children that I that love to sleep with music. Um, there are two that I, there are three I recommend. There are three that I know about and I know they are good. One is Red Cross sells a radio. It actually has a Red Cross on it. It has television stations. It has shortwave. It has um, FM, AM, and it also has the weather channel. That's a red, it's a Red Cross radio. You can get it from Red Cross. Then you can also get another one. It is the Grundig, G-R-U-N-D-I-G. It used to be sold by Radio Shack. I, radio Shack has disappeared significantly. I know there are a few stores around. I don't know if you can Google that online. The most popular one I know is the Kaito, K-A-I-T-O. And there are different models. You can choose whatever model you want. Um, they have different features. They come with siren. They come with um, a flashlight. They come with antennas. They come with shortwave. Um, they come with AM, FM, the weather channel. They come with a crank. So if you have no battery, you can crank them and that would power them. They come with an internal rechargeable battery, which lasts for days. They come with a solar panel. They can also use um, AA batteries, and they can also use electricity. Wide variety. And um, the, 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 this one is available on Amazon. I used, one up, I used one up to yesterday. Yes, I remember when we were in the Air Cadets, we had used uh, walkie-talkies and so forth. So that brings me to the reminder. It's good to have what You definitely want to have those things as well when you're in the country. You want to have a compass as well. And um, it's also important if you're in an area where there's animals, it's good to understand and learn the, the feces, the type of feces or droppings. Uh, it lets you know what type of wildlife is there as well. It's also important before moving to the country to know what type of wildlife is there. And uh, it's important. Uh, one of the things that uh, actually a sibling of mine who gave me some tips because he was in the army, he shared with me that urine actually keeps animals at bay because some animals actually use urine to mark their territory. Uh, so I know it may sound kind of disgusting, <laughs> but uh, you may want to probably look into having a, a store, a bottle of spray and urine in there and use that to kind of keep spray in the, in the air where not, not, not on your garden, obviously, and not too near it, but just, you know, the circumference just to keep uh, any wildlife. If you do have wildlife where you are away and at bay, just want to show you. That is true. <laughs> yes. Uh, that is, that's don't interesting. <laughs> they don't like urine. And that I can is. testify. Uh, I just remember seeing deer poop uh, when I first moved, uh, but um, try, I tried it and, let me tell you, I don't see poop again. <laughs> there, is one, there is one they call elephant urine. It's, you can purchase it from Amazon. Mm. That you can use in your garden and, it will, and the squirrels will not come nearby. No, nope, animals will keep, they'll stay away. They'll stay away. Yeah. Would that keep the can, rabbits Can you away? repeat what it was? I missed what it was that um, Dr. Oh, Kerr said. Wolf urine? Yes. Yeah. What? That, um, my, my wife just reminded me there's also wolf urine you can buy in the, from Amazon and, oh, and that so will keep the wrong. squirrels and uh, away and other animals. Was that wood urine he said? No, wolf. I, was, I think wolf. Said, oh, wolf, wolf, wolf. Oh, okay. Wolf urine. Okay. Wow. And I'm learning a, a lot. There's yeah. A, there's urine. A, and there's also blood meal, which would also keep some animals away. You get that from Amazon too. Mm. Just uh, we're, just gonna, we're gonna address one more question before we come to a close. There's a question from our audience uh, that's asking here, what about gut foods if this becomes a problem living in the country? Could you, could you please? What do they mean? Yes, can the person who asked the question elaborate? It says, I'll ask the question again. It says, what about gut foods if this becomes a problem? So I think they're referring, they're equating this with if they have a gut issue, uh, what kind of foods can they implement if they have gut issues living in the country? 
I think that's what they're trying to say, I believe. That's not coming out, Bryce. Well, the gut, <laughs> the gut issues would be just, uh, uh, I guess, um, taking of the probiotics. I'm not sure. They'd have to be more specific when they say gut issues. Yeah. I mean, gut issues can be huge. It, yeah, it's, it's a huge topic. It's a, it's a gut. It could be a lot of things. It could be an inflammation of the of the intestine. Hyperglycemia. It's okay. very complex. It's a very complex. But uh, if ever you have any questions, uh, everyone, you are more than welcome to reach out to Dr. Heather McBride and any of our panelists on this panel. Um, I just want to thank each and every one of you here on this panel. Uh, God bless you, Dr. Kerr, Pauline, and Dr. McBride. It's such a blessing to have you on this panel uh, in order to address our viewers and how to prepare in these end times. And when I think of you know uh, the parable of the ten virgins you know we have the wise and the foolish what was the difference of the two one was one group was prepared one was not right so it's so important that you know as god's people not only we need to be prepared spiritually uh, which is number one but it's good to be prepared mentally emotionally in anything that we do we find our hands to do uh, that we must inquire of the lord we must pray fast if we need to when we make major decisions especially when it comes to moving to the country or any disasters that we are not prepared for, uh, praise the Lord um, that uh, the Lord gives us insight of what we can do. Um, it's in the councils, it's in scriptures, things that he wants us to do in order to prepare in these last days. I just want to thank everyone here that has joined us. God bless you tremendously. And uh, we pray that not only that this has been um, information that was pertinent and for you and your family, but also most importantly, that you're prepared spiritually for Jesus comes. As we see the signs that are unfolding, it's definitely, um, definitely a reassuring that he's coming very soon. We can see the signs. Before and, you close, somebody yes. wanted to know the radio that I recommended. The last one is a Kaito, uh -huh. A A I T O, Kaito. That's available on Amazon and there are wide variety. So they can go there and purchase whichever one they like. But you have different types. They're all good. <clears throat> oh, okay. Thank you. And yeah. I missed that question. I'm sorry. Thank you. Thank you, sister, for answering, asking that question. And we praise God for everyone here. Um, we're going to end with a prayer. And I would like, uh, please, Dr. McBride, can you grace us with a closing prayer? Yes. And do you mind if I just address someone wanted to know about hyperglycemia, um, oh, sure. what they can use for hyperglycemia? Sure. They did have in here. Um, yes. Basically, the first thing is the eight laws of health. I can't stress that enough. No matter what your, your, your issue is, and specifically uh, walking and drinking enough water. But you could also use string beans. You can make a string bean tea. You know, the tip of the string bean that we usually cut off that has like an insulin like effect. So you get the fresh string beans that you don't or even grow them yourself here in the country. But that part that we usually pick off at the end, you keep that on. You can either steam it. You can make a, a, a tea. Also, okra can help cinnamon. There's lots of things that can help naturally with bringing down your blood sugar. Um, a lot of people don't know, um, but I know you wouldn't be able to get that so much here. But Aki in Jamaica. Jamaican ackee will bring down your blood sugar. Matter of fact, when people die from ackee poisoning, it's because the blood sugar drops way down too low. Um, so those are things that you can utilize. But again, um, on a platform like this, just giving a, a quick answer isn't always the best. You need to go into more, but that's just a general overview of things that you can do. Make sure you're walking, make sure you're getting your water. You can use string beans, you can use okra. Those are things that will help. A cinnamon keeps the blood sugar level uh, even. It's something that we don't recommend that you use as food, but you can use it medicinally. So that's just a quick answer to that question. And I will close out with prayer at this time. May I and add one more thing to that, Dr. McBride? That's Sheen, D-A-S-H-E-E-N, is good for the blood sugar as well. Oh, yeah. That's okay. Sheen? Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. I know that's Sheen. Okay, so mm -hmm. I'm also going to put, um, I'll put my number in. You can text me uh, if you have any further questions as well. Just realize that we get a lot of stuff coming in. So if you don't hear back immediately, please feel free to text again. But at this time, I will close with prayer. Before you close, can you say out your number out loud? That's okay. 
Okay, or, that's fine. The number is 516. If you want to put it in the chat for me while I'm saying that's five. 516-477-7155. That's our ministry number now. 516-477-7155. All right. And you can grace us with a closing prayer, please. Amen. Amen. Okay. You know, just one other thing. I just like to invite others to come on with us. You know, this is such an awesome thing. Um, I really believe that God is doing a new thing in that he is preparing his children. He's given everything that is needed to prepare us for what is to come in these last days. And Dr. Kerr, uh, he does every Sunday. We do um, um, a Zoom uh uh, Bible class, which is amazing facts, and we invite everyone to come. It initially started out as a beginning class, but we realized that individuals, even that have been knowing the Bible a very long time, are not aware of some of these facts. So I'm going to just put in the chat after is also encouraging them to come on. It's every Sunday from 3.30 to 5 o'clock. We have amazing facts Bible study. Uh, Dr. Fitzgerald Kerr leads out, and we've been having a wonderful eye-opening time. So I want to invite everyone to come on that as well. So Heavenly Father, we just want to give you all the praise, the honor, the glory, and thank you so very much for the various platforms that you're putting together to prepare your children for that which is soon to come. We ask, dear Lord, that each and every one that's on this platform will be able to bring back to memory all the things that they heard today that will be utilized at a time when it is most pressing and important. Thank you so much, dear Lord, for our host and her um, desire and her zeal to follow you and to do that which would be enlightening to your children. We pray, dear Lord, that as the time of trouble comes, that each and every one of us would be prepared and ready. And Father, we thank you for what you've done and what you will do and ask that you will draw us all closer to each other as you draw us closer to you. In the loving name of Jesus, I pray. Amen and amen.